I am now a Linux user. I moved from Windows to Linux when I got my new computer, uh, the one that's right behind me there. It's a laptop from System76 who make computers that run Linux as their first class operating system. So it's optimized for that, the hardware runs great, the drivers work well, and it's using PopOS, a Ubuntu derived distribution. I really like it because it has good defaults for developers on top of Ubuntu. It's running with the GNOME environment by default, so that's the desktop and all the animations and windows that you see on the desktop. I really like them because thanks to these animations it makes for a nice visual experience in the tutorials that you will see on the channel. I've been using Windows since I was a kid so switching OS at this point has been a certain commitment. I knew the environment. Why would I completely change? Well there are some good reasons for that. I got to try Linux and I was quite seduced by its advantages and for me they really outweighed the strengths you might have on Windows, in particular all the applications and the commercial programs that you can find there, you can't find on Linux. In this video I want to give you the reasons that made me switch to Linux. Hopefully it can give you a sense of what Linux strengths are and maybe convince you to give it a try someday. So let's get to the computer and let's get started. Programs open fast. Here's a comparison of programs opening in Windows versus Linux. For example, I hit enter on Godot and boom, it is here. I open my Godot project, boom, it is here. I have a fast SSD on both computers I'm using. I'm not recording from the same computer on Linux and Windows because I don't have that ability right now, but I've done tests on the same computer running Windows and Linux side by side on dual boot. Uh, and everything was much faster on Linux. Here is Krita opening. Krita is pretty slow to load. It takes quite a bit of time on Windows. On Linux, it's a lot faster. It's probably twice as fast. It would be the same if I open Blender. Blender just opens instantly on Linux. It's crazy. And loading files and all in Blender is a lot faster. Another thing that's faster overall with the same hard drive is Surge. It's just a lot faster. The results come a lot faster. Even with USB drives and all, it's slower than on this SSD, for example, obviously, but it's still very fast. And on Windows, I always had to install new programs to make the search faster, to make it replace all the defaults. Since the Windows 10 release, I've had the search hang on me from time to time just randomly and it becomes unusable. You have to close the um, application, the process and restart it. And on Linux, it doesn't happen. It just It's just always fast. So I can search for anything. When I do a search, it's going to both search for the software and the files that I may want to launch. I can look, for example, for my accounting folder, just like that. I would find a few files there. And on Windows, I was using utilities for that. So Vox to replace the launcher, uh, everything to have a globally indexed search. And I found that Ubuntu or Pop! OS has very good defaults when it comes to that. Everything is fast, everything runs well. The programs that ship with Pop! OS, I haven't had trouble with them, basically. I don't have quirks or things hanging around and all. While on Windows, the Windows Explorer, the Windows Search, and quite a few other things have crashed, hanged on me. Uh, I'm not talking about Godot, Krita, etc., which different programs have their own bugs, right? So these can just Krita crashes sometimes, Krita hangs, it happens. Uh, Godot Alpha has some issues, obviously, it's Alpha software, that's completely normal. It does have issues on Windows as well. But I really appreciate that I can launch pretty demanding programs and they get started very quickly so I can just get to work. I don't know about you, but for me, the ability to get started very quickly, to stay in the flow, when I type something on my computer, it just appears on the screen, helps me stay focused and work for long hours, long sessions at a time. One of the nice things with Linux is how you can really change whatever you want in it. That's not a myth, so I'm working with the GNOME interface right now which is pretty lean and it's also very visual and animated, which is perfect for tutorials for what we do. 
but I've been able to customize it already with a few extensions. Like for example, my terminal, I can just press F12 and I have something that will drop down from the top of the screen and I can type my commands anytime. This terminal, also the shell that I'm using, is not Bash, the one that comes by default, but it is Fish and that was extremely easy to install. So this one auto-completes as you type, so it suggests things as you type, like uh, the commands you are going to use often. Obviously, I use git commands quite a lot, so as soon as I type git, I can get my status in the current project, I can get some information about the current status of the project I'm in. I don't have to type cd to change directory, I can just move around and I can press tab to instantly get all the subfolders in the current directory to get auto-completion for that, instead of having to type ls, for example, and start typing anything. And as I type any folder name, it will offer to complete it in line for me, which is quite convenient. So this is a customization if you want, be it this F12, the this little extension that makes the hanging shell drop down, but also the shell that I picked. Not that you can't do these things in Windows, it's just that it's very easy on Linux because I can just go apt search for any application that I would like to install. There's one, for example, here that's called Z, which is a bit hard to search for, obviously, because you're just searching for one letter, so it's going to return lots of results. But I have it here. You're gonna have it on Windows as well, I think, by the way, using a bash or Windows and all. Z is going to search in a fuzzy way any folder that you frequently and that you recently have been navigating to. For example, we are working a lot on the Godot Open RPG lately, as you've probably seen on Twitter. So if I type RPG and press tab, I'm going to get all the folders that have RPG in them. And the first one is the one I go to the most lately. So this is the turn-based RPG. And so I can quickly navigate to anywhere on my computer, to any project that I work with often. Then I use Emacs as my text editor. It's a little complicated to use, but it has some unique functionality. So I can type Emacs dot anytime. It will instantly open the project in Emacs, from which I can use Maggot, which is an Emacs package to see anything I've uh, modified in the game. I can see all the Git status. I can remove lines individually like that. You get it. Uh, I can even do hard resets almost instantly. It's a very fast tool to work with for me. The command prompt or the terminal. So on Windows, you can replace the default command and PowerShell, I was using something called Commander, an emulator for the terminal where you can run the different shells that you want. So you can even use Bash or something like that through Sigwin or the Linux subsystem for Windows. Now, here on Linux, it's very easy to install, to maintain the shell, and there are lots of great tools and plugins. I'm using one called Fish. So when you have it installed, you can enter Fish, press Enter, you will get into that shell from a uh, bash the default one and this one is great because it auto completes everything that you can do as you type it's very convenient for that like i can launch my text editor from there as a server i have lots of commands installed for that i showed you z with the ability to type for example i want to go to my website i can just get to different folders and navigate to on my website and it has really good VI controls with the little indicator for the modes I'm in. So let's say uh, I want to install something. So I would type sudo apt install. Let's say we want to install fish. It's already installed, obviously, because this is the command shell I'm running. So I could do that. Anytime I can go back to normal mode, type DIY to delete the words I'm on, things like these. This one has excellent tab completion. It lets me navigate to folders without even pressing CD. So I can go type dot dot slash dot dot and I go back up the computer. Anytime I can use the tilde key to go back to my home directory where I will find my applications, download pictures, etc. I can really easily run commands in the prompt with that and it's very discoverable. 
talking about the shell, installing new programs on your computer and maintaining them, updating them is excellent on Linux. So you have full control over the apps that you get, the updates where you download them from by default, which is not the case on Windows. You have to turn off services and all and you need Windows Pro to do that, which is more expensive than the regular license. But here, anytime I can do sudo, which will let the command run as the root, kind of the system administrator, then I can use the apt command. This is the package manager, if you want, for Ubuntu. So it's going to, when I download a program, it's going to find all the other libraries and tools this application depends on. It will install them all, it will register them all, it will update them automatically when I ask it to update. And so you can type install and then the name of all the programs that you want to install. So by default, say you have a new computer and you want to install Krita Blender Inkscape. So you can type Krita Blender Inkscape, press enter, and they will all get installed. So I have them all installed right now. I also have uh, the app image for the latest version of Krita. So I, I'd rather work with that at the moment, but it will offer to install all these things for you. So if you want to have a list of everything that you have installed and create a base script that you can just run when you get to a new computer, you can do apt list dash dash installed and it will list everything you have installed on your computer. Then it's up to you to filter what are the main applications and what are dependencies and to create the commands that you can run with that. There is a visual tool that you can use. It's a little old school, but the Synaptic Package Manager. And this one lets you find lots of programs, visually, code editors and things like these, search them and update them from a UI and you can see in the existing packages which are the ones that you have installed already with the little icon. This one, Synaptic Package Manager, very efficient as well. It's very easy to find the applications that you want to install using the built-in App Center, especially on Ubuntu, Elementary OS, and a few distributions that come with some App Store if you want, although everything is free in this one. You can then type to search for the program you want to install. So you could go with Krita, you could search for Blender. You can click on any of the entries and it will give you a description, the ability to install the package and a look at the program, at what it does, what it is. Now, the good thing about that is when you go to the installed category, if there is any updates for any of the programs that you have installed, you will get a little button to update everything and the system takes care of it for you. So you never have to go to the Blender website and download new versions if you are working with the stable version. If you have ever worked with the new Windows Store, you'll know its design is pretty bad and it's a bit of a pain to manage your apps. So that's another big upside of Linux. Now this goes pretty far. So uh, when you are working with Windows, for example, in Windows, they, they have a certain look, a certain feel and functionality, and you can't change that. But on Linux, you can. You can completely remove or change your environment. So here's an example of something called Child Windows Manager. There are a few of these on Linux, and the way it works is when you create new windows, they are going to take a slot on the screen and you can split them a bit like what I can do on Emacs. So I can split my windows or my frames, for example, like that. And I can navigate to whatever my to-do list here. I can have it take all the space. This is exactly that for your desktop environment, right? This might not always look the prettiest, but it's designed to help you work very efficiently because with one keystroke, you can open three or four windows that are really the exact size that you want, that have the applications that you want. And it's something that sometimes engineers use, but not only. And these systems can help you be extremely productive. Now, if you look at my system, it's very user-friendly. And the good thing with Linux distributions is that you can start with something that's friendly, like what I have, where you have, for example, software library where you can just go search for every application that you use often and you have free options for every one of these and they update and you get security updates etc automatically and then moving forward you can 
can slowly add a few plugins, you can slowly customize your system to make it work the way that you want. I wouldn't say that everything is easy, but if you look at someone who's starting to use Windows for the first time or Mac or starting to work with a computer, just using the mouse is not easy. You have to learn it. So it's the same thing with Linux. It might feel a little hard coming from a different system, but within two or three days, I was as productive as I am with Windows. And there is security. So there are two aspects to it. One would be viruses. You don't have that problem on Linux. You don't need an antivirus running all the time on your computer, which eats resources, scanning every file that you create, so you can get every ounce of your CPU power working for you not against you. On top of that, sometimes you have incompatibilities with your anti-malware program on Windows that conflicts with another application or prevents it from running properly. Again, this does not happen here. There's another side to security as well, which is control of your data, control of your identity online. On Linux, you know that by default, it should not pull data from you. Large organizations like Microsoft pull as much data as they can from you. They try to get as much as they can to analyze it, to resell it. Maybe you don't know exactly what they are doing with that. Every time you use geolocation, obviously they pull a lot of data from you. Actually on your Android phone, even when you are not using the services, even when you turn geolocation off, interestingly enough, like they know your position and all. So you are a product, you become a commodity that large organizations share between one another to target you with the most efficient marketing they can find, which is a little scary to be honest, because as you can now have AI that crawls through this data and tries to use all the knowledge that we have about the human brain to trick you into consuming more, into buying more products, and it does succeed, it's really scary. A lot of tools are competing for your attention and pushing you to procrastinate. Keeping your own privacy, all these things are very important, I think. This topic is not related to game dev directly, obviously, but I think it's important to talk about because it affects all of us. These are a few of the reasons why I switch from Windows to Linux. There's more to it than that because I love free software. We are dedicated to covering free software and we want to create more educational material related to free software and Linux. Now moving forward, there will likely be more videos on the topic that are related to game dev. So for example, the programs I use and the environment I use to create games entirely on Linux and entirely with free software. If you're interested in that, please tell us in the comments. I think things like the shell or codes editors or things like these that you can use to create all kinds of programs to automate all sorts of tasks on your computer could be interesting, right? How to navigate your folders faster, manipulate your files, how to use the shell to help you with your assets pipeline, for example. If you're interested in any of that, please tell us in the comments. But that said, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and let's see one another soon in the next one. Bye-bye.